Welcome to the Faster Podcast by Flow Cycling, the podcast where we talk about anything and everything that makes you faster on your bike. This is episode 29, and today we have Jeff Van Drunen from Alt Red joining us on the show. Alt Red sells a patented beat supplement that helps improve performance and recovery. Listen to this episode to learn how this one of a kind supplement can help make you a faster cyclist. Hey, this is Chris with Flow. When we're not producing this podcast, our team at Flow is designing some of the fastest carbon fiber bicycle wheels in the world. As a thank you for being a listener of our podcast, Faster by Flow, we wanted to offer you 20% off your next purchase of wheels at flowcycling.com. Head over to our website and pick up a set of wheels to make you faster at your next race or ride. Simply use coupon code PODCAST, that's P-O-D-C-A-S-T, in all uppercase letters when checking out to get 20% off your order. Thanks again for listening to Faster. We hope you enjoy the show. All right, Jeff Van Drunen, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on your podcast today. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. It's going to be a great show. Um, I learned about Alt Red by going to Ironman events. My brother and I uh, have a charitable side of our business where we donate bikes and helmets to kids. And every time I go do one of those events, uh, the friendly staff at Alt Red is always there. And I walked over to the booth and said, what exactly is this? So we're going to get into that today. Um, But before we do, I wanted to kind of talk about your background a little bit to see how you got into Alt Red. So tell us a little bit about... uh, your business, how it got started, and where, and then we'll get into where Alt Red came in. Yeah, happy to do that. Awesome. So, um, we started as a family farming business in in Moments, Illinois. We're just south of Chicago, and um, so we we were growing a lot of culinary herbs at the time, and slowly got more into processing. So, starting to dry the herbs, freeze herbs. And from there, we launched into doing a a full line of dried and frozen fruits and vegetables that we supply to the food processing industry. Um, The company's called Van Drunen Farms. And out of that, um, it was 20 years ago, we decided that there was a real need in the marketplace for a higher quality uh, dietary supplement, phytonutrient type product. And we had this stream of great raw materials flowing through our plant every day. And we thought, how can we uh, take this, you know, this bounty of fruits and vegetables and actually concentrate, extract, study these unique phytonutrients in plants and and supply those to the dietary supplement and nutrition industry. Okay. Interesting. So in all of that process, um, you kind of perfected that process. And then this is what led to Alt Red. Is that how it happened? Or how did that, how did Alt Red come about? Yeah. So through that, through that process, we um, started with simpler products and hired a team of, you know, great scientists, started our own bio research center and analytical chemistry center. And so from doing simple extracts and concentrates of fruits and vegetables, we quickly evolved into discovering new phytochemicals and then doing clinicals and more work on those to bring some very new unique phytonutrients uh, to the industry. So uh, we started out with simple things like blueberry anthocyanins and sulforaphane from broccoli and that kind of thing. And then we slowly evolved into, you know, more interesting, newly discovered type phytonutrients. Interesting. So Alt Red is really just a very, a small part or, or, or a part of your business. So it's a small part of our business, and most of the ingredients that we sell, we sell as ingredients to other dietary supplement companies. And this one was so unique, um, we thought, you know, if there was ever an ingredient to try to take direct to consumer uh, and sell it for what it really is and how how unique it is, this would be a great one to try. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get into some questions about Alt Red specifically, since that's what the show is about. So, I'm I'm guessing the easiest way to label Alt Red would be to call it a performance enhancing supplement. Is that fair, or can you give it a better description? That's a fair description, uh, both in our published clinical studies and with athletes using Alt Red. This has been a consistent um, result of what we found, and and so our studies and our 
testimonials both confirm that. Okay. So can you, can you tell us what the product is and what exactly are you ingesting when you're taking Alt-Red? When you ingest Alt-Red, you're ingesting an extracted and concentrated aglycone form of betalanes. So aglycone would mean um, without sugar. So okay. the betalanes in Alt-Red are actually derived from red beets. And we like to use the term betalanes unleashed, meaning unleashed from the sugar and unleashed from the plant matrix of what they would normally be found in when they're in beets. And, and in plants, betalanes are always found in this glycone or sugar attached form. And we separate the sugars and the nitrates from the betalanes and then supply a stabilized bioavailable betalane concentrate and basically throw everything else away. Okay, so all of the beta lanes that you're using are coming directly from plants. Nothing's manufactured in a lab. It's all coming basically from nature. Correct, yes. Okay. And okay. so beta lanes, um, you know, the term beta lane comes from the Latin name um, beta vulgaris, which is the Latin name for beets. But there's actually a few beta lanes found in some other plants like amaranth and cactus fruit. Um, and this is a color pigment. And the colors are basically like a red and a yellow color. So there's two classes of beta lanes, these red and yellow beta lanes. But okay. in nature, they're very rare. Okay. And I've been doing some research on this because I like to research every topic before we have a show. But from what I understand, the ones that are found in nature in beets naturally and cactus are not very bioavailable. And is that because of because they're connected to the sugar? Or what else is it that makes them not bioavailable? That's a great question. Um, in the plant matrix in this glycone form, for some reason, they're not bioavailable to humans. And that's not a hard and fast rule um, that glycone versus aglycone is, is bioavailable. But in this case, um, when they're in the presence of nitrates and sugars, um, they're just not bioavailable. Okay. And, and for those listening who don't know what bioavailable is, can you explain that? Yes. yes. So bioavailable are definition of bioavailable would mean if you consume a beta lane and it just shoots right through you uh, and doesn't get <laughs> absorbed into your blood or into your body then it would be non-bioavailable so you're consuming it so it's consumed but it's not taken up naturally by the body and so certain things that we eat you know go directly into our bloodstream okay. um, like sugar yep. uh, and other things don't and so in their native form, beta lanes are very non-bioavailable. Okay. So Alt-Red is, you guys are saying it's a thousand times more bioavailable than a, a naturally occurring beta lane. And so can you explain exactly why that is? I know we talked about the nitrates and the sugar, but is there anything else that contributes to that? There's nothing else that contributes to that. So what we do is we um, administer the product and we compare it to beet juice, beet powder, and we actually take blood samples on a continuous basis and look for the beta lanes in the blood after a product's consumed. And so we can actually measure, you know, how many of these beta lanes actually get into the blood with alt red versus beta lanes from a uh, beet juice or a beet powder. Okay, so the effectiveness, so you see a lot of people have a beetroot supplement or beet juice. A lot of people use this as a performance enhancing it helps their uh, aerobic system. So you're, how does Alt-Red compare to those? You're saying that the, the, the typical beet juice or beetroot powder, it's really just passing through you? Well, that's a good question. Let's talk about that. So okay. beet juice and beet powder are sold for their nitrate levels. So it's a dietary nitrate product. Okay. And so beets are very high in dietary nitrates. Um, and so when people are consuming these products, they notice some enhancement in performance when they consume large quantities of beet juice or beet powder. Usually they're talking about 250 milliliters to a liter of beet juice or the equivalent beet powder. Okay. Um, and so that's really a nitric oxide or a, a nitrate delivery system that uh, may help increase nitric oxide. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, so Alt Red is doing something different than that. Then, and we, I we'll get into the performance side of it later. But basically, what you're saying is that Alt Red 
is doing something different than the nitric oxide effect. Well, the nitrate effect. So the nitrate when, effects, yeah. Well, all the studies done on the uh, beet juice, for example, um, are looking at what's the content of the nitrates in the beet juice. They give it to athletes, see what the results are. But they're, they're saying that it's increasing nitric oxide levels. But in all the, study of the studies, they've not actually tested nitric oxide levels. They've just tested, um, does the nitrate level of your blood go up um, after you've consumed the beet product? Uh, okay. In our case, there's no nitrates in the product. So it's zero nitrates, zero sugars. Interesting. And uh, we still get a very strong performance effect. Okay. Um, so all red, from what I can understand, is 200 times more concentrated than natural beets. And we've heard things that altering things too far from what nature intended may not be good. So high fructose corn syrup is a good example of that. Are there any short-term or long-term side effects to taking alt red, considering it's 200 times more potent than what nature intended? Yeah. So 200 times is really because the level of beta lanes in beets is relatively low. And so what we're doing is removing all this sugars and nitrates and that kind of thing. And so basically, since we're throwing everything else away, um, it, it takes about 200 pounds of beets to make one pound of a beta lane extract. So it's a full spectrum extract. So this beta lane component is equivalent to the component that you'd find in beets from a spectrum standpoint. Okay. Uh, but the biggest difference is we've just thrown away what we consider the bad stuff, the sugars and the nitrates. <laughs> okay. So there's no there's no negative side effects to any of this. Perfect. Okay, let's uh let's start to talk about some of the performance effects because they're they're pretty incredible when you think about it. Um so you guys, the results of three clinical studies say that alt red improves performance and recovery. So let's start by talking about the performance side and then we'll jump into recovery. So how do the beta lanes in alt red physiologically improve your performance? What's actually happening inside the body? So what's happening is we discovered this um, after we did these studies, because when we did the studies, we had the performance and recovery uh, effects, but it was difficult to understand exactly where they were coming from. So okay. we spent a lot of time researching this, and it turns out that um, one, there's two main paths that the beta lanes work on. One is that there's a unique nitric oxide signaling mechanism in the body, and it's called nitrosylated hemoglobin. So normally your hemoglobin, which is what transfers the oxygen around in your blood, uh, normally grabs onto two oxygens, delivers it to your muscles, for example, drops those off, and comes on back. Okay. Um, what happens when you consume beta lanes is that this HBNO, this nitrosylated hemoglobin, increases after you consume the product. Okay. So why, why is that good? So nitrosylated hemoglobin is actually a carrier form of nitric oxide. And nitric oxide has a very short shelf life in the body. So the half-life of nitric oxide is about 0.5 seconds. And the half-life of nitrosylated hemoglobin is greater than six hours. So this nitrosylated hemoglobin, which is a nitric oxide signaling compound, actually lasts in the body, you know, 10,000 times longer than uh, free nitric oxide. Okay. And so normally the body would start producing its own nitrosylated hemoglobin to open up the smallest capillaries in your muscles or wherever oxygen is needed after you get to a decreased muscle oxygen saturation point. So as you're working out, doing endurance exercises, you know, you're going to have a low oxygen saturation depending on the level of your activity. Okay. So your body's reaction to this hypoxia, we call it, is that it will slowly start to create nitrosylated hemoglobin. And this nitrosylated hemoglobin will specifically vacillate the parts of your, let's just talk about muscles. It'll vacillate the areas in your muscles that are in this hypoxic or low oxygen state. Okay. And so what Alt-Red is doing is it's 
increasing your nitrosylated hemoglobin before your activity even starts, and then maintaining a higher level of nitrosylated hemoglobin after your uh, physical activity starts. And so you can kind of think of it as entering into an activity. Uh, your body thinks it's in an in a oxygen deficient state when actually it's not because you haven't started the activity yet. So it's like a pre-hypoxic conditioning at first. And then secondly, it maintains a very high level of this nitrosylated hemoglobin as the exercise takes place. Okay, so the nitrosylated hemoglobin, I think I said that right, this helps this helps transport oxygen to your muscles or two parts of the body? Is that what it's doing? Oh. So what it is, is a signaling mechanism to enhance vasodilation of the smallest capillaries in your muscles. Okay. So it's, it's kind of a delivery system for nitric oxide signaling in your muscles. Okay, and the increased vasodilation allows more oxygenated blood to get to the muscles? It increases, yeah, blood flow into your muscles and more oxygen into your muscles, correct. Interesting. Okay, so why is Alt-Red doing this better than any other supplements? Just because you've removed the sugars and the nitrates and everything, it can do what other supplements can't. Yeah, so, you know, there aren't any other supplements that have actually been... Um, or substances found that have been able to increase uh, nitrosylated hemoglobin. We did check it against even something like nitroglycerin and some other uh, synthetic drugs that increase nitric oxide, but it was quite a bit stronger than even any uh, product we tested it against. So it increases your nitrosylated hemoglobin, you know, up to 150% over uh, your baseline level after you consume all red. Okay. Interesting. All right. Let's talk about the three clinical studies because um, I want to get into that because some of the performance uh, improvements are pretty pretty interesting. So we'll talk about each result that came out of those studies. So the first one was that you can get 3.5% more watts. Uh, can, you talk, can you describe this claim? And um, was it for a short effort, a long effort? How much of the supplement was needed to, do, to get this gain? Uh, things like that. Yeah, this was a study that was completed at Auburn University, their sports science department. And uh, this was 28 male cyclists. Okay. Um, and they were actually in relatively good cycling condition. Um, so not recreational cyclists, but people who took it a little more seriously than that. And what they did is they took a 100 milligrams or two alt red capsules for seven days before the test started. Okay. And then on the day of the cycling, they took one capsule, which is 50 milligram, very small capsule, and they did a 30 minute all out cycling time trial. And during that time trial is when we had this increase in the power output on the alt red group versus the control group. Okay. And how did you measure the Im improvement? Did you test them before or after? How did, how did you know that it was a 3.5% improvement? Yeah. So this is a double blind, what they call a double blind crossover placebo controlled trial. Okay. And so each group did the exercise, the time trial twice. Okay. Once they did it with the placebo, once they did it with the alt-red. And they didn't know when they had the placebo or when they had the alt-red. Okay. So when you're looking at clinical studies, you always want to make sure that they're double-blind, placebo-controlled crossover studies. Um, otherwise, yeah, it doesn't mean too much. Okay. So assuming that doubling a dose of alt-red is safe, would doubling your dose in in improve this value or is the dose the dose? The, the most important thing to consider here is that we've never tested a larger dose in a clinical study. Okay. Um, different people obviously have different uh, weights. <laughs> and yeah. so a small person um, is going to have a stronger effect than a larger person. And so it's not unsafe to take two capsules and you will get a stronger effect. We haven't quantified that stronger effect in a clinical study but you'll definitely get a stronger effect if you take two instead of one 50 milligram capsule. Okay, but it's probably not linear. Hey, you're going to probably 
peter off at some point at some point okay um i myself like on a if i'm gonna do a longer race or a hundred mile ride you know i'll take i'll take two before i start but on the average day even i just take one okay perfect so the, the other claims were i'm gonna cover some of these kind of um cover two of them together so you had faster times three percent and fast or more distance cover two and a half percent that's just basically the higher watts created a faster time and more distance that's correct on okay. the cycling study that that is correct and then on the two studies we did on runners one on competitive runners at uh university of california davis sports medicine program we did competitive runners and triathletes in two separate studies and, okay. and also in both of those studies they had faster times and more distance in the alt red group interesting so you also listed something that says increased exercise efficiency of 5.4 percent can you explain what increased exercise efficiency is and how you measured that yeah so what they do when they're looking at exercise efficiency they're actually looking at watts this was from the cycling study okay. watts per milliliter of oxygen consumed okay. per kilogram per minute um so, so what does that all mean yeah 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 so it really is two different things um when they're looking at this um the results will show that your peripheral resistance in your arteries drops significantly on the alt red group and also Another measure is this vascular resistance. So they have two measures, peripheral resistance and vascular resistance. And uh, the combination of these two is causing a large increase in the flow of blood and oxygen uh, through your muscles. And so they calculate, calculate this and describe it as exercise efficiency in the scientific world. Okay, interesting. Does uh, This is a random question, but does altitude have an effect on alt red and its effectiveness. So if you're higher in altitude, is it better? Or what does altitude do with this? We haven't studied this, but you know, since it's tricking your body in a way to think that's it, that it's in a hypoxic state, when you go to higher altitudes, that's what you're experiencing. It's, it's hypoxia. I mean, you're not getting as much oxygen and your body responds to that. Um, eventually by just producing its own HBNO and more red blood cells. But if you're going to go do uh, a performance exercise at higher o or lower oxygen levels, um, the alt red's definitely going to have, it, it's going to have an effect, the same effect, potentially even a stronger effect, uh, especially if you're a lowlander who's just going up there for the first time. Well, I live in San Diego at sea level, and I'm doing Leadville in two weeks, so <laughs> I'm, I might need all the help I can get. <laughs> you might want to try it. Yeah. You might want to take two when you move over there for that one. Yeah, no kidding. So just you said that you know when you go to elevation, you get an, a bump in hemoglobin and red blood cells, right? That's just the effect of elevation. It takes some time. It yeah, it does. Time. So if you take alt-red on a continual basis, will you also see an increase in hemoglobin, hemoglobin and red blood cell counts? We've never done a study long enough to evaluate that. We have some indications that that may be the case, but we've never done a long enough study to uh, truly evaluate that. Okay. All right. Uh, the last performance metric that you mentioned was 14% Sorry, fourteen percent less lactate production. Did you do a lactate study as you were doing it? Is that how you determined that? Yeah. So in all three of these studies... Um, we were looking at markers of muscle damage mm -hmm. and one of the markers of muscle damage is creatine kinase. The other one is LDH. And then we also looked at lactate. Um, so between these three, um, lactate was 14% lower. The reason that we believe it's 14% lower is that when you're delivering more oxygen, you're further away from this, your muscles going into this anaerobic state. And so when you're doing an all out effort, if you can, you know, if you're right on the line of aerobic versus anaerobic, you know, if you can, if you can lower that a little bit, you're going to have a lot less lactate production. Okay. And so it, it's really a, in, in this case, it's a measure of, you know, how hard are your muscles working to put out this extra effort? So we're yeah, putting yeah. out more effort, but we're producing 14% less lactate, which means 
you're you're operating at a higher level, but you're not getting in into that anaerobic state. And that's because of the increased vasodilation. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. So those same three clinical studies also show that Alt Red improves recovery. Physiologically, how did the beta leans in Alt Red help improve your recovery? So in the recovery, when we did the triathlon study, what we did is um, it was the same protocol where they took the product for six days in this case and then took it two hours before they actually did their 10K time trial, which was a running trial. Um, then they waited 24 hours and the next day without taking any product, they did a 5K time trial 24 hours later. And in the 5K time trial 24 hours later, they all did very well, even better than they did in the 10K time trial. So hmm. the alt red group, and again, it was a crossover study, double blinded, um, even outperformed their 10K improvement level the next day when they did their kind of recovery time trial test. And uh, at that time, they also noticed that, you know, they had greatly reduced levels of creatine kinase uh, in their blood. Interesting. Okay. In the three clinical studies, they list a number of ways that Alt-Red improves the performance. One of those is a 9% reduction in muscle damage markers. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So, you know, the two muscle damage markers we were looking at are creatine kinase and lactate dehydrogenase. Okay. And both of these markers are products released by muscle cells when they're damaged. So they leak out of your muscle cell when the muscle cell starts to get damaged. Okay. So the amount of creatine kinase and lactate dehydrogenase in the blood after exercise correlates to the level of muscle damage you experienced in your exercise. Huh, okay. So muscle damage isn't necessarily a bad thing. You need a little muscle damage to get stronger. But in this case, we were just demonstrating that doing a time trial, there was significantly less muscle damage than um, the, the placebo group versus the control group. Okay. And what about the 3% improvement in recovery? Well, the 3% improvement in recovery is back to the competitive triathlete study. So when they did their recovery time trial, the 5K, 24 hours after their 10K, um, they all improved their times by 3% versus the placebo group. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the usage of um, Alt Red. So is the product legal in all sports and is it banned in any sports currently? It's currently legal in all sports. Um, we're certified by NSF Sport and Informed Choice, so every lot of material we make is tested for every banned substance that's out there. Okay. And um, that's a big plus because we do have a lot of professional athletes that are, are using the product, and that's a requirement that they have. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And how do you take Alt Red? Is it pill form, or is, well, how do you take it? It's a very small capsule. Actually, the the dosage of the beta lanes in the capsule is about 12 and a half milligrams, which is a tiny amount of material. And you take it one to two hours before you start an activity on a day when you're actually exercising or performing. And yep. it takes about one to two hours for the beta lanes to peak, the beta lane level in your blood to peak. And then it slowly tapers off over the next three to four hours. And okay. so if you want to be ready, it's better to take it just a little before you start working out. Um, you get a better effect from it. And what about how often? So I guess two questions with that. Number one, do you want to use it for every workout? And let's say that you have a, uh, you say, it, you know, tapers after about three to four hours. If you're going to do like an eight hour day, do you want to take one partway through your day or you just take one before the race? Yeah. So on a regular day, if you're, just doing your normal routine. Personally, I take one in the morning when I get out of bed. I work yep. out in the morning. And then I take one at night uh, before I go to bed. But on a day, you know, if you're going to do a longer eight-hour activity, uh, what almost everyone does is they take one capsule 
two hours before they start, one at time zero, and then another one every hour and a half until about two hours before they're going to complete their activity. Okay. Interesting. And you say that it has about a three to four hour window. If you've taken alt red for, let's say, like six months or 12 months, does it, do you know if it has any long term effect? Like, does it have a, almost like a half life in the body where, hey, let's say it takes a month for the effects to, to wear off after prolonged use? Or is it sort of immediate once you stop taking it? Yeah. The half life in the body of the beta lanes themselves is probably, you know, pretty much all of it's going to be out of your system in 12 hours. Um, so if you stop taking it, the effect isn't going to last very long. Okay. Um, and that's why I take one morning and night. Uh, so figure 12 hours is how long it stays in your body. The effect on the nitrosylated hemoglobin is going to be a little bit longer than that, but eh, it's pretty much correlated with that. So there's no permanent effects from taking the supplement? No. Okay. Um, uh, are there any times you should not take it? Like if you're sick, if somebody's pregnant, um, if you're trying to get pregnant, anything like that? Nothing that we've ever found. So we've not had any reports. We've had zero reports of any kind of negative side effects from awesome. Alt Red. And where do you manufacture the product? We manufacture the product right here in Moments, Illinois, at our Future Suticals facilities. Cool. And all the beats are right from the USA. So 100% um, made in the U.S. product. <laughs> Grown awesome. and made. I love yeah. that. Grown now and made. Yeah, as far as a, a patent, do you have any patents on the product? We do. So we've patented both the product itself and the applications for its use. Um, so it is very well protected from a patent standpoint. So what you're telling me is there's nothing else is even close? There's really nothing else, yeah, really even close out there okay. in the marketplace. Um, it's true that you can get, you know, beet juice and beet powder, um, anywhere but we like to say you know it's derived from beets but you can't get it from beets so right. beets are great i eat a lot of beets myself but right. uh, the type of effect you get from alt red you won't get from just eating a couple beets every day and so, so let's let's say for example you're not somebody who works out on a regular basis or let's say you do something that's not really in the um let's say you lift you're a weightlifter or something like that it does taking alt red every day do anything to your health from a usage perspective if you're not an endurance athlete yeah we noticed on some other studies we did we did some uh, early studies on joint health and joint comfort associated with alt red that's actually how we got started because a lot of uh actually a lot of runners started taking it at that time and they noticed that their joints felt so much better but when we when we did these studies on uh you know, just kind of a sedentary population that had joint problems. The one thing that everybody reported was that they really felt more energized and had, had more energy throughout the day. So that was one of the things that, you know, we, we followed. And um, really across the board, they all felt like they had more energy and, and felt more energized. But it might be because they just had better flow of oxygen <laughs> through their system. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And th there, are there any antioxidant effects? You know, you see red wine or chocolate, things like that. That's the other uh, mechanism by which the alt red works. So it's a very strong and unique antioxidant effect. Um, one of the worst oxidants that your body produces and your muscles produce uh, with physical activity is hypochlorous acid. Nobody talks about it too much, but uh, hypochlorous acid is extremely damaging uh, to your mitochondria and also to this ATPase mechanism that is involved with your muscle contraction and release. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so beta lanes are a very unique scavenger of hypochlorous acid. So we've done quite a bit of work on looking at how powerful beta lanes are um, and compared to other phytonutrients. Um, it has a very unique action on quenching hypochlorous acid that's produced when you exercise so that's a big part of its its action also is this you know quenching of hypochlorous acid so it is a very strong uh, antioxidant antioxidant for very specific oxidants yeah so even if you're not an athlete taking you'd have a benefit from taking it in that regard you definitely have a benefit from taking it interesting yes. okay
All right. Well, we have a, a famous question on the show. It's called our what point question. And I think you kind of already answered it. But the, the idea is if the listener takes the advice of the expert on the show, or in this case, takes the product sold by the expert on the show, how many watts is that worth? Um, we always use an athlete with a 300 watt FTP. So I think the answer to that is three and a half watt, three and a half percent, right? That's correct. So we can, you're going to add uh, 10, 11 watts to an athlete with a 300 watt FTP. Okay. Very interesting. Um, where can listeners find out more about alt red? Um, if you want, can you share any information on pricing and, and how it, how it happens, like how that goes? Yeah. The best place to find out the information on alt red is at altred.com mm -hmm. and all the information is there. Yep. Um, currently the price is $50 for 30 capsules. Okay. And it's available at altred.com. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. Uh, we've done very few uh, interviews with um, with supplement companies, but after I talked with Jackie, uh, who works for, for you, and saw some of the studies that were behind this product, product, I thought it was pretty amazing. So thanks for coming on. This is a very interesting episode, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk soon. Thank you much. All right. Have a great day. All right. All right you Bye. too. Hey, this is Chris with Flow. When we're not producing this podcast, our team at Flow is designing some of the fastest carbon fiber bicycle wheels in the world. As a thank you for being a listener of our podcast, Faster by Flow, we wanted to offer you 20% off your next purchase of wheels at flowcycling.com. Head over to our website and pick up a set of wheels to make you faster at your next race or ride. Simply use coupon code PODCAST, that's P-O-D-C-A-S-T, in all uppercase letters when checking out to get 20% off your order. Thanks again for listening to Faster. We hope you enjoy the show. Thank you for listening to this episode. Be sure to listen to episode 30 for a follow-up interview with Canadian cycling coach Steve Neal for a detailed discussion on Fat Max Wattage. If you enjoy the show, please help us by sharing our podcast and by leaving a rating or review. If you want to learn more about our company, Flow Cycling, please visit us online at flowcycling.com. That's F as in Frank, L-O-C-Y-C-L-I-N-G.com. You can also find us under Flow Cycling on Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, ride safe.